Hello, my name is Kern, and Invasion of Segovia is so good, I'm not sure people will be sleeping on it because it is that good. I think once you face a few decks, I think it's going to become more clear why this is a competitive card. I'm not sure it's the most competitive card, that it goes in the most competitive decks in Standard, but that's the thing about these funky synergetic cards, is that it's very hard to know how they're going to fit into the meta, and as new sets come out, it's gonna change potentially very dramatically. This card, just introduced, already very good. I think it only has room to grow. A lot of the best cards to pair with it are not gonna be rotating out anytime soon. So, what is this card? Uh, if you didn't see my last video or you haven't seen this yet played in Standard, it's a battle that creates two 1-1 one -one tokens when it enters, not very good. It's got four defense counters, uh, and it takes three mana to do that. But if you can attack down those four defense counters or otherwise get rid of them, then it flips into Cadus, Sea Tyrant of Segovia, which is very powerful. 3-3 three, three creature with non-creature spells you cast have Convoke. That is very powerful. Potentially a, a combo card, although that's not the deck we're going to be exploring now. It's not a combo card, although there are, of course, synergies that take advantage of this. And it also has a very relevant ability at the beginning of your end step, untap up to four target creatures. So this deck is pretty crazy. It's not as crazy as some of the other decks I've already started brewing with it. Maybe I'll show those on the channel as well, um, but it's still pretty crazy. One important thing I think about brewing with Invasion of Segovia is you need to have something to do with it as soon as you flip it. A combo deck wants to win as soon as you flip it. That's Again, that's not what this deck is. I'm not 100% sure we can do that in standard right now. Maybe in future sets, maybe right now. I have yet to, to realize that, but you want to do something with it immediately. It needs to get enough value that it's justified the effort that you've put into both casting it and flipping it, which is a tall order, because that's three mana and four damage, essentially, that could have been done to an opponent, an opponent's face, or say, an opponent's creature, like, for instance, if you're using a lightning strike against your battle rather than against their creature. So that's really the way to think about this. How can you get that much value out of it? There are a few ways. One that I explored in my previous video quite a bit is Silver Scrutiny, which I think is an excellent pair for this card, and you should always, always be playing this card with Invasion of Segovia. Because, you know, once you can use your creatures to Convoke for mana, now you're casting this with huge X costs. It's not unusual that you cast this for X8 or X10, and now you're drawing that many cards. At that point, you pretty much just win the game if you can untap from there and actually play those cards. But the thing is, is you have to untap with Cadus in order to be able to do X8 or X10s, right? That's not guaranteed. This could be removed easily before then. You know, just one two mana spell, one one mana spell, I think. I think maybe the right one mana spell could even remove this. Is there a one mana deal damage to three three damage? Okay. I mean, there's lay down arms. So yeah, there is a one mana way to remove this, right? In any case, um, Silver Scrutiny is a great pair for this as well. Because what you can do is, if you have a Silver Scrutiny in hand, flip your Cadus and then pass the turn. Now, Cadus will come in as an untapped creature that can be used to Convoke for Silver Scrutiny, but it can also untap up to four other target creatures, right? So you're very likely to be able to do an X3 Silver Scrutiny at instant speed. So you pass your opponent, then if they do target the Cadus and try to remove it, cast the X3 Silver Scrutiny before it's gone, you know? And now you've just gotten some enormous amount of tempo. You've probably still gone a card up over your opponent, you know, like they've spent the removal spell, you lost your Cadus, but you also drew three cards, so you're probably two cards up over your opponent, actually. Um, but if they don't remove the Cadus, then you untap and cast an enormous Silver Scrutiny or something else, right? This is one of the things you can do with it immediately. In a lot of decks, you're likely to have quite a few things that you can do that are like that. For example, this deck has Impulse that we could cast also on our opponent's turn, Make Disappear to hold up you know, some type of counter spell, again, using our Convoke creatures, or maybe even to protect Invasion of Segovia. Here's another big card that I missed before, March of Swirling Mist. Very big with Invasion of Segovia for, uh, for several reasons. One, you know, it, it costs X and you get to phase X creatures out. So if you have 10 creatures and there's a board wipe and they're all untapped, let's say, which is not that crazy because you do have, you know, vigilant creatures, lots of vigilant creatures via Invasion of Euphorexia that could be on the field. You know, it's not that crazy that you could tap all of them. You only need one mana to phase all of them out. And now their farewell does nothing. But importantly, you're very likely to be able to phase out at least your Cadus, at least. 
one mana to pay the casting cost of March for Swirling Mist, and then one more mana to phase out Invasion of Segovia. So you can protect it. You're also likely to have more mana on top of that to phase out, or creatures to convoke, to phase out additional things. Like, for instance, your Monastery Mentor. This is a card that I missed before that absolutely should be paired with Invasion of Segovia. Not in every single deck, but it is an excellent pair. It's a payoff for casting a lot of non-creature spells. It helps you go wide, which is what we want to do anyway, to flip Invasion of Segovia and also you know, in order to have more creatures to help us convoke more spells. So excellent pairing. I already identified Third Path Iconoclast, but of course that goes well with it as well. So anyway, Martyr Swirling Mist, very good, not only to protect Invasion of Segovia, but also Monastery Mentor. Also makes for a nice play pattern of turn four, Monastery Mentor, hold up one blue and a blue card in hand if you have to do it that way to phase out Monastery Mentor. Not a great play, but like decent, decent. It's like doable in some situations because essentially you will have gone two cards down to their one if you do it that way so not great but still it might be valuable in some situations to do that um, play on turn four better turn five hold up a march of swirling mist that you can actually pay for without exiling a blue card and uh, from your hand and also you know you could also just hold up make disappear so there's a lot happening with this deck. Uh, when you do play Cadus, what you want to do is go off right away. And there are several ways that we have to do that. We have four Impulse, we have the three Silver Scrutiny, but we also have two Bitter Reunion. This is a one and a red enchantment that reads, when it enters, you may discard a card if you do draw two cards. So right on its face, it's just card parity. I mean, it allows you to get deeper in your deck, but it's just card parity, right? You've lost a Bitter Reunion, you discarded a card, and you've replaced it with two more cards. Convert your, your mana into spells, for example, would be one way to use the spell. Pretty decent for what we're trying to do. Impulse is better for that purpose, but Bitter Reunion is pretty decent. However, it has this very relevant ability. You can pay one mana and sack it to give creatures you control haste until end of turn. So you're paying these huge, you know, you're playing these huge invasion of new Phyrexias once you've flipped Cadus. You're making like eight two twos. You want to be able to attack in right away. Well, now for the low, low cost of one mana, you can. <laughs> it's, it's actually very enormous for the deck. Uh, the other big thing here is invasion of Gobicon. Um, one and a white to allow you to peek at an opponent's hand and tax one of their cards for two more mana. Pretty good to play early on in the game and really slow your opponent down, which is good because we need time in this deck, especially against more aggressive strategies. Uh, but also nice to just get a peek at what's your, in your opponent's hand uh, to, to sort of know what you have to prepare for in terms of the kind of spells you're going to need to protect or the kind of answers you're going to need down the line. But it flips into this really wonderful enchantment that um, gives 1-1 one, one counters to every creature that attack this turn, of your own creatures that attack this turn, and can be sacrificed to give creatures you control hexproof and indestructible until end of turn. So a wonderful way to protect your whole board from things like sweepers. It does not protect against farewell, unfortunately, but that's part of the reason why we're playing for March of Swirling Mists. Just also really good to allow you to block with a bunch of creatures and have like advantageous trades that aren't really trades because you won't lose anything. So really good in the deck for a lot of reasons. And it only has three battle counters, which importantly means that a single lightning strike can help you flip it right away, which is a wonderful use of lightning strike in a lot of situations. So uh, that's the deck. Let's dive into some games and see how it does. Not a terrible opening hand. We have lands, which is good. Um, we could use this to remove a thing if we had to. Bitter Union can help us get deeper. We don't have double blue for Silver Scrutiny. I want to not keep it, but I'm going to. And also on the draw. Yeah, I probably shouldn't have kept it. We're probably just going to use this as removal against their Swift Spear. Um, two or more. Two, okay, so I don't want to take damage. <clears throat> So let's get this out of the way. And then we'll play that and we'll have all of our mana fix, basically. We did get the second red. So do I cast Lightning Strike now while they're tapped out? I think I am going to be channeling a Ganjo for removal. Uh, let's see what they play. They could play something else that I want Lightning Strike to hit, but I'm definitely not doing Bitter Reunion this turn. i got to remove something. Like that. I would love to hit that with Lightning Strike. 
Beautiful. Glad I held on to that. <clears throat> Next turn, just using Iganja's channel ability, or or I play Invasion of Segovia. Now I'm threatening, to, they're gonna probably transform the rabbit battery, or reconfigure the rabbit battery onto Monastery Swift Spear, unless they have a spell. Uh, even then, they're not gonna wanna attack with the rabbit battery when I have Invasion of Segovia chumpers down. So, this is nice. Depending on what they do, it could buy me a turn, which then I can use to play Bitter Reunion. It sucks I can't Bitter Reunion and channel a ganja, though. It's unfortunate. Why, though? Why would you do that? <laughs> I don't understand. That makes very little sense. Okay, right. Okay, so I guess I can't double block here to destroy one of the rabbit batteries. Do I block now? I mean... Take four, go to eight. It's not seem very good. Ugh, it sucks I can't bid a reunion and a ganjo next turn. I think I'm going to keep him around because it's going to potentially block out more. It just depends on what they do next turn. They're going to reconfigure on the Monastery Swift Spear. They're thinking about it. What's the point of that, though? Oh, they just separated it. Well, they have to, right? They have to spend the mana to separate it to them later. Um, really wish I could cast Bitter Reunion. What could I find here? A Lightning Strike? Not worth it. Um, is it? It might be worth it. Get rid of that Monastery Swift Spear. But I'd have to hit it, and I only have two left in my deck. Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm drawing here with Bitter Reunion that justifies not holding up a Ganjo. So do I play this now to get it out of the way, tapped out of the way, or do I play this to potentially X2 a Silver Scrutiny? I think I've got a potentially X2. Every turn matters. Every single moment matters here. Depending on how they top deck, we could just be dead. I mean, a Ganjo is huge insurance, so... Okay, they're coming in again. Um, do I chump just yet? If I chump, let's say, Rabbit Battery, and then I draw two cards with Silver Scrutiny, I still have a Gonjo next turn. I'm down to seven or maybe six, or maybe less if that's a Lightning Strike. I don't want to chump because then they can attack with Rabbit Battery separately. I mean, it's pretty much the same thing. I think I'm going to take it. What I would really like to see on top is an invasion of a new Phyrexia and then create three two twos and just stabilize from here. Two invasion of Segovia. So I can't hold up Iganjo if I do this, but I am making plenty of chumpers. And I can do this and then invasion of Segovia. So let's do that. And we're going to drop a land here, probably a pain land. <clears throat> Another invasion of Segovia. Well, I've got chumpers for days. I mean, I can trade some of these now. Next turn, I can create four 1-1s. One -ones. I could even attack here. It's risky. I don't think I should. <clears throat> so next turn, double invasion or invasion and channel a ganjo. Which is better? Double Invasion? I mean, they could have... Um, what's that? Three mana? I think it's three mana, one damage to each creature spell that Red has. They could have that. I mean, if they had it in hand, they would have cast it already. Do you have a play with Fire in hand? Probably not, otherwise they wouldn't be thinking about it. Easy block. So if I, I'm trying to think if I can afford to attack Invasion of Segovia now and set up for like a huge Silver Scrutiny, which is probably really not what I want to do anyway. Uh, oh, I don't have a third untapped land unless I play out the Aganjo. If they attacked again like that, I want to punish them. But I don't know if I can afford to 
holds these back. I mean, there's, hmm. Uh, this is terrible. Yeah, I didn't realize <laughs> I had kept um, a tapped land. I should have kept the pain land after all. I think we're doing this regardless. And do I do this and play another invasion? I think I do. I don't think it's as critical that I remove their thing. Which means now I can actually afford to attack down one of these uh, invasions of Segovia. And still have enough chumpers back. And if we top deck an invasion of Phyrexia, that could be really important. To just make a billion knights. They, okay, they passed combat. They don't want to attack into four chumpers. <laughs> Which I would not block with all four anyway. I think that would be good for them. But maybe they don't know that. Maybe they think I have something in my hand that would make that a bad idea. I think they're going wide to prevent me from being able to attack Invasion of Segovia down without losing a bunch of creatures. But a lot of them untap anyway. Um, no reason to play him pre-combat. Is there? I mean, I could give him haste, but I don't think that's the play. So... All they have to do is top deck a play with fire and we're dead. So, or a lightning strike for that matter. So we're on borrowed time here. We don't have any way to gain life. And we're gonna pass the turn here. We have impulse and impulse can find Maybe another card to help us survive. Maybe. <laughs> no, they don't want to play anymore. <laughs> They've, they're taking their ball and they're going home. Which they still could have easily won at that point. But, yeah, again, all they had to do is top deck a burn spell. Uh, could be decent. Could be decent. A lot of tapped lands, but I think we'll be fine. Do I play this or that? I think I played this. I could top deck, um, what is it called? Invasion of Gobacon, and then I would wish I had white. But I could also top deck Third Path Iconoclast or Lightning Strike or Bitter Reunion, and then I'd wish I'd have red. So I'm gonna play this. And then that way I can play this. Next turn, hold up, make disappear. Evolved Sleeper, eh? Maybe I don't play this just yet. Maybe I bounce. Maybe there's a world in which I actually bounced Evolve Sleeper. Probably not, but let's just play this for now. Concealing Curtains. Is that worth counterspelling? Yeah, it might be. I mean... I think an Invasion of New Phyrexia would be very good against them. Hmm. <clears throat> And plus, that gets rid of a 3-4 Menace body. Maybe cast this... Maybe cast this next turn. If they don't hit my hand. Well, I don't think they're going to hit my hand. Yeah, two two twos could make a huge difference here. I think it would be very greedy for me to just hold on to this, waiting. Okay, I would I would exile your own thing, but uh, you do you, my guy. Uh, double block? I mean, yeah. Hmm, I could bid a reunion and hold up make disappear, which... Makes this a lot more attractive, but I'd have to get rid of my Odawara, which I think I'm okay with that. I shouldn't have tapped that way, though. That was bad, because now I don't have red mana up, in case that matters. Um, 
Hitting their hand is probably just as good, if not better, than Make Disappear. So let's do that. You have a shield rid. I knew it. Um, Breckener Bank Buster. Not worth taxing. That is very worth taxing, though. Next turn, we have an X3 Invasion of New Phyrexia, which is pretty big. They have another Graveyard Trespasser, and they have a Go for the Throat, but that alone is not going to solve their problem here. You should be exiling your own Graveyard, not mine. Maybe they think that my spell count in my Graveyard matters or something. I could make two 1-1s. One -ones. I could do that in blocks to... Uh, yeah, to trade well with these guys. So next turn, we pass to them. It would flip to Knight, though, unless I cast a spell. So I guess I hope that I hit a cheap spell. <clears throat> that casts four as well, so that's not possible. It's going gonna, it's gonna to flip this to be a 4-4, four, four, and then I can't do that combat trick. Dang it. I wanted to trade with two of these 1-1s one and two of these 2-2s. Two I guess it doesn't really matter. Block with two of these two twos is against one of these is just as good anyway. Which do I do that if they offer it to me? Right now they're letting me flip invasion of Segovia, and they don't have a go for the throat anymore. I could also flip invasion of Gavacon. And then it gets pretty nutty being able to block out their graveyard Traspesser. Traspesser? I think I don't block because I could want to flip Invasion of Segovia. Unfortunately, I did not get a good card on top. Here I can play Sokinzan. Ah, flipping one of these does count as casting a spell, though, for the, for the purposes of the day-night cycle. But which one to flip? I can cast a Sokinzan to chump these guys out, which is going to start being necessary here while still holding up a Make Disappear. Next turn's Make Disappear is not hugely relevant unless they cast Invoke Despair and they find it on top or that's what they have in their hand. But my question now is just, do I flip Invasion of Segovia? I think the answer is no. Because it doesn't do anything right now, so I'm just exposing it to removal. So instead we'll do this, put a counter on each of these things, which makes it harder for them to just attack in. Uh, and I'm not going to even defend anyway this turn. Next turn, if they attack again, then I have another free attack. Now their counters are up to 4-4. Four, four. They're still vigilant. Um, they're pretty screwed at that point. Uh, this is not worth making disappear, so they just take make disappear. They can't take Sokinzan because it's a land. It's unfortunate, though, because that was our answer to Shieldred, uh, which they could do next turn if they get a land on top. Okay, March of Swirling Mist. Can't pay the word cost to target the Graveyard Trespassers. I could attack in with the Knights um, to offer a trade with the Graveyard Trespasser going in for something, but I'm not sure what I would be. It's not worth it. I think... Yeah, I don't think it's worth it. It would be nice to grow them, of course, but they're just going to accept the trade, and then we're just going to have two one ones. But they are going to grow to 2-2 if I also attack with them. Hmm, maybe I do take the trade now. Shieldred gets on the board next turn, though, and then we're kind of screwed. I can phase it out, but I don't really know what I'm doing. Flipping Invasion of New Phyrexia? Maybe I do have to attack here, because I need to close the game quickly. See if they accept the trades with the knights. They do. 
So I could phase my knights out in response. Basically, that would have just let these two spirits get in, but I think it's okay for us to trade here. I think I'm okay with that. Okay, end turn. Luckily, we have lots of protection here. March of Swirling Mist, also Light Shield Ray. Can they play the Shield Rid? And if they do, do we phase it out right now? Maybe they didn't draw land. That's that's seems like wishful thinking there. Really want a payoff card. I really want a Swirling Mist or um, a Silver Scrutiny. Okay, do I phase it out? It would allow me to flip Invasion for Shurzies. And I want to do it now so that if they power up the Reckoner Bankbuster, um, it's not still a creature. Oh, okay. Yes, the Silver Scrutiny. Okay, what do I need here? Um, so we attack with one of these spirits. We leave the other one back as a blocker, or do we also attack with it to grow it? I think we have to leave it back as a chumper. And also maybe as mana. Yeah, as mana. So we flip this. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight mana. What do I need? Uh, how much mana do I need to leave up is really what I'm trying to figure out. So two mana could get me another phase out of shield red, which I could do on their upkeep before they have a chance to crew it. No, they would still be able to crew it. <clears throat> if I did that. Three mana doesn't, there's nothing at three that makes a huge difference. I mean, Monastery Mentor, that's not gonna do it. So I think I do leave two up. And we're going to go in full control because I don't trust this. One, two, three, four, five, six. It's a huge scrutiny. No, dude, no. What was that? What was that? <laughs> it's okay because I forgot I'm going to tap these creatures, so I should have tapped them all. I did that math wrong. One, two. I guess I had six up. I had six mana up, not an X6 up, but that's okay. That ended up working out anyway, I think. We got the Swirling Mist, so we can phase out Shieldred. In response, they would power up the Reckoner Bank Buster, though. I don't care if they gain two life, honestly. Yeah, we'll let them draw. We got the Invasion of New Phyrexia, though, so we're looking at a very wide board next turn. We may win this still. <sighs> Graveyard Trespasser. <clears throat> okay. Now they power up the Bank Buster with the, the Trespasser. Do I pay the ward cost to phase it out? Oh, they're going to draw. They're not going to power it up. All the more reason to ask if I pay the ward cost. Um, <clears throat> one, two, three. So if I do this now, then I can impulse one, two. I have one mana up to still phase out shield root, but I can't also phase out graveyard trespasser. I could do one, two, three, phase out all three of these targets. Let's do that. Uh, submit zero. No, no, no. Cancel. No, come on. I have to go faster. This uh, submit zero. All right, 
Lightning Strike. <laughs> and they've had enough. Get bullied. Get bullied, Mono Black. <laughs> All right. So let's see. From here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten mana. We do an X8 Invasion of New Phyrexia. We have eight two twos up already. We're not taking damage from Shieldra just yet. Then we have an Impulse that we can cast um, right away, actually. We can just cast it immediately. I could also do pay three mana for Monastery Mentor, do a slightly smaller invasion of New Phyrexia, which is probably smart. Then we're actually starting to get close to threatening lethal. Actually, do we win next turn? Hold on. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So this would be five two twos on its own. Give him haste. It's really four two twos in that case. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 damage next turn if we just swung all in, which is... I don't know if that's what we would want to do. If we Monastery Mentor first, one, two, three, four mana left, then we played Invasion of New Phyrexia for X2, um, make a 1-1, one, one, tap some creatures to draw into an untapped land to give them all haste. Yeah, even then, we're still not winning. I'm not sure what the line here would be exactly. Um, I think we're okay with taking a damage from two damage from Shieldred. I think we're going to outvalue them <laughs> pretty quickly here. On their turn, we impulse. That doesn't even count as a draw, so it doesn't trigger Shieldred. So, yeah, I mean, Invoke Despair wouldn't even do it. We would just get rid of our Bitter Reunion and one of our little tokens here and take two damage, right? Is that what would happen? They'd draw a card. Yeah, I think they're pretty screwed here. <laughs> so pretty good bullying of, of Mono Black here. Oh, another Fibble Thip Appreciator. Wow, I rarely see those. It's got Monastery Mentor in hand and Invasion of Segovia. I think we're going to keep it. I think we start with Stormcarved Coast, where they have here. Is this a five color deck? Yes, I think. Oh god, which one's this again? It's the one that allows you to make tokens and pump it. Okay. Is this a, it's a reanimator deck. Archpriest of Shadows is what they chose to discard, though. Is that what you want to reanimate? That's what you want to use to reanimate. So we'll impulse on their turn, I guess. Not sure I want to play a Monastery Mentor into this just yet. What is going on here? Beginning of your upkeep, put an oil counter on it, create a thing... Sacrifice that token. Okay. Or beginning of your combat turn. All right. Uh, make disappear seems pretty good. I could have also taken another impulse there and been happy about it. Invasion of Gobicon. I don't have the lightning strike to be able to flip that in preparation to play a monastery mentor. So the question is, do I just play it out? They don't have black uh, for a, um, a cut down or a go for the throat. Um, let's play an invasion of Segovia and see what they do. I'd like to wait until turn five to play Monastery Mentor with the make disappear. And hopefully still have a token left to sack for the casualty cost as well. So I guess next turn, am I playing an X2 Silver Scrutiny? Am I playing just an Invasion of Gobicon? Yeah, I think it's Invasion and Hold Up, Make Disappear. Take a peek at their hand, tack something, and uh, then get ready to counterspell something on their turn five. Seems pretty good. I'm a little worried about them casting a big spell here turn four, but turn five is usually when most of the uh, reanimation spells come into play. Oh god. So what is this again? When it's tapped, they have Death Touch. Uh, otherwise, they have Hexproof. This does have Trample, so this will go down to 2, even if I block it. So there's no point in me blocking it, because next turn it's going to be a 3-1. Uh, and then they get to flip it anyway, so there's really no point in me blocking it. Alright, let's have a peek at what's in that hand. We got an Itali, we got a No One Left Behind, okay, and a Relic of Legends, and a Nahiri. What the heck does this do? Until your next turn, after one target creature attacks a player each combat, if able. Okay. 
Do they have any equipment in the graveyard yet? No, they don't. So Atali we could tax, but they're just going to discard it anyway. So I think what we really want to tax is the no one left behind. I mean, I could also tax the Nahiri so they have nothing to play next turn. Um, they're going to make me run my tokens into their um, Serith. They get to flip this. How much do I care about that? Not a heck of a lot. Or I just counterspell it. I guess counterspelling it is just as good or better. It just depends on whether or not I want to hold up that counterspell for something else. Like, say, their next reanimation spell. Yeah, maybe I just play this now. Because I want to hold up the Make Disappear for the Monastery Mentor anyway. I mean, they don't have any removal in their hand is what I just saw, so I guess that's not as critical. Hmm, maybe I should have counterspelled it, because that's a problem. They get to choose the target creature to force to attack, so them making my Monastery Mentor attack feels pretty bad. So now they have a creature that allows them to discard their Atali, but they don't have the reanimation spell, probably. I mean, this was just something they top decked just now. An impulse. Okay, that gives me something to do if I don't need to use make disappear. So let's get this down and see if we can't go off before them, because we're both very close to doing our thing, I think. Alright, a tapped land. What is this card? When it, end, when it deals common issue to a player, look at the top card. You may play land from the top of your library or cast a spell with memory less than or equal to the damage dealt from the top of your... What? Oh, I see. Damage dealt by the combat damage. So the paying is mana cost. If you don't, I don't care. I'll pull down your underwear. Um, no, I guess? I don't know. Sure. No, you don't get to play it. Sorry. Ottawa, huh? I guess I could kind of impulse. If I get an untapped land, I could be bouncing their Urabosk's Forge. Reset it would be pretty good. I could just do that now, too. I think I'd rather find a land first. I could also bounce their Serith to maybe get in and try to flip the Invasion of Segovia, but I don't know that that's the right thing. They're at five mana. Next turn, they could play this if they found a land on top, an untapped land. Can't play that just yet. Um, let's impulse and see what happens. Okay, options, options, options. March of the Swirling Mist. I haven't seen any removal, really, from them yet, so I don't think that's it. I could take the land and play Ottawara on the Urabosk Forge. Um, reset that. Seems like not a bad idea. But we're buying time for what exactly? And how are we getting towards attacking down that invasion of Segovia? What we really need to do is play a lot of spells. So I think it's actually Impulse here. A second Monastery Mentor is not bad, but I could just take a March of the Swirling Mist and then protect things. I could also phase out this, but not that. Mm, that's actually pretty good. So if I play this, X1, phase this out, they can block with this, but we're attacking in with all these creatures and this is for sure going to flip. In fact, I just need to attack with these two um, to ensure that it flips. But I could start to attack this down. Seems pretty good. <clears throat> so 
So I can X3 to Silver Scrutiny if I have to, but I really don't want to do that. And I can't cast any spells that I would be able to top deck off of that. So like I can't do this now and find a mate disappear, which is what I'd really love to do. Um, let's see what they find here. Found something big of their own, I think. Another Atali. Okay, so they get a reroll. They get their own Invasion of Gobicon, which is not great for me. Um, they take... Some, yeah, we have to cast this now because they're going to take it. Or they're, well, they're just going to... They're just going to... Never mind. They don't take it. They just tax it. So we let them do that. We could still even cast it for X3 <clears throat> this very turn. I think they're going to win this one. I think they've gone off too much. Uh, that looked like an invasion of New Phyrexia. Yeah, so that doesn't do anything for them. All right, do I have to cast this now? Probably because I can't afford to just take a turn off drawing a bunch of cards. They're going to want to flip the invasion of Gavacon, I think. Do I want to prevent them from doing that? I'd have to put a lot of creatures in their way. So if they get this, they get the counter thing, which isn't that amazing. But what they really get is Hexproof and Indestructible at will, which could prevent a March of Swirling Mist. Um, oh, do I care? I'd have to put three one ones in their path too. I don't think it's worth it. We're going to let them have it. do it now. Dang it, we did get a March of Swirling Mist. And now they can give their things Hexproof in response. Although they already have Hexproof, so really it's just the indestructible part. So yeah, it was the right call to let them flip it because as long as they have their Serith Viper's Fang on the board, I can't do anything anyway. Um, <clears throat> what I need is a huge, huge, huge spell to cast. An invasion of New Phyrexia would be great. They've taken one. Otherwise, I have not seen one at all. Um, I could try to get in to flip the invasion of Gavacon. If I cast a lightning strike... Actually, I could just cast a lightning strike on it right now and flip it. But maybe I also want to attack to start growing these creatures. Um... Seems good. I could attack the other invasion, and so I grow them twice. If I attack with all six of these 1-1s, one three of them die, I have three remaining. They are now three threes. Seems pretty good. And they can't really block safely um, my monk, so it seems I think all the monks are going to get in. So I'm really only these two creatures, probably. Maybe even just one, because they'll probably only block with Atali. And we still have a huge March of the Swirling Mists up. Um, so we could, like, block with creatures and then phase out our blockers, for example. Okay, they're thinking about something. I'm not sure what it is they can do. I can't transform. Let's see here. I want to think about this for a second here. So let's say they blocked all three. One, two, three. I want to put some pressure on their face. They could prevent me from flipping the second one if I do it that way. So I'm going to do this to ensure I get to flip the second one. If they block in such a way that I could pump these monks and remove some of their creatures, they could sack the light shield array to give their stuff indestructible um 
In response, I could march with a Swirling Mist, but I don't think that would be the best use of my Swirling Mist. Okay, a double block is very interesting there. I don't understand that. What's the point of that? Just exposes it to death. Okay, so what's going where? That's still gonna flip. All right, so I think we're gonna do this there as planned. Uh, let's tap my mana. Oh, right. This will trigger another, um, I didn't even think of that. I don't have to cast the March of Swilling Mist. Wow, that's loud. To get the other prowess to make these three threes, because this already does that job for me. So if they want, I'm happy to trade here a little bit. I lose two tokens, but I've gained two tokens anyway. Beautiful. Unless they wanted to fill the yard for some reason. That's a move I don't understand there, why they double blocked and didn't just block with a tolly there. Okay, they went off, but maybe we're still going to be able to do our thing. We still have a March of the Swirling Mist in hand, which is very, very good. I really need a way to draw more cards, though. We've already seen three impulses... So, what else do we have? We have one more Impulse, Jesus, two Bitter Reunions, and how about Silver Scroots? Where's our Silver Scroots? Two more Silver Scroots. Not a tech of a lot to help us get deeper in the deck. Not likely to happen. So we really want to cast this on our turn so that we can prowess up all these creatures, but that depends on what they do. It may not be an option. They could cast their Atali now if they had an untapped land. One, two, three, four, five. No, because they got rid of their mana rock creature. So they can't use this spell just yet. If they had an untapped land, they could play Nahiri. Force me to attack with my Monastery Mentor, which at this point I'm okay with. I think we might even have Lethal. Wait. Oh, right. They're tapping their Serith in order to replay this. Okay, so they're going to give back up to Itali to return Itali? I don't know. Unfortunately, they have um, Hexproof still, so I can't target them. So, okay indestructible does trample damage still overflow i think it does if it doesn't i have to look this up all right i don't think so okay so never mind yeah i just was wondering i shit that's not gonna work okay pass to attackers so if they get in for combat at all for combat damage at all then they get to reanimate something else. They're attacking for, and if it's an Atali, that could be huge, right? So I'm, do I block? If I cast a March of the Swirling Mists, they've got Tramp, fuck. Then this grows, I think I let them hit me. Here, let's do this. Shit, no. Oh, well, no blocks. Fuck. <laughs> oh, I still had a little bit of timer left. Okay, I can still do it. I can I can phase these three out. Let's do that. So I'm not going to have anything to trigger prowess, and I'm really counting on top decks now to go for lethal this next turn, which is like I'm hardcore going into lethal strategy. None of them get plus one, plus one counters because they're phased out, and it's my turn. Thank goodness, Bitter Reunion, and I had a land to ditch. Okay, yeah, that looks like fine tappings there. <clears throat> yeah, I think this is game here. <laughs> I don't even think I need another spell in order to win, but we got one. <clears throat> so they're just letting... They're letting priority go. That's why they sacked that thing. 
And I'm not going to do math because math is for blockers. How does this have hexproof? This is phased out. Oh, because they just used the, um, they just sacked the light shield array. So I can't use a ganja to destroy it if it decides to block, but it doesn't matter. Pretty sure we have lethal anyway. Good game. <laughs> wow, that was quite the game. Yeah, sure. You can destroy my Cadis now. I mean, I can just do this if I really want to. I could have also given everything haste to allow these to attack in as well, but very clearly <laughs> we've done enough damage to kill them. <laughs> okay, that was that was quite the game. Synergy slash combo -y kind of stuff versus synergy slash combo -y kind of stuff. But we made it in the end. And that's the deck. I'm pretty happy with it. I honestly don't know what changes I would even consider at this point. Um, just want to mention really quick here that this deck was partially inspired by a video from Capricorn. After I posted my last video on Invasion of Segovia, I went looking to see if there are people making videos or even just lists with this. And I found his list. Um, very cool Jeskai list. It's not like this one. There's some similarities, but I don't want him to get the blame for however this deck <laughs> turns out. But he seems like a really cool content creator. So I'm going to leave a link uh, in the description down below to his video so we can spread the love to all of us a small MTG YouTubers. Um, here's some of the cards that uh, I was considering. Surge of Salvation was in uh, Capricorn's list, and um, I took it out. I think the reason it's here is to help protect mostly the Monastery Mentor, partially the Invasion of Segovia, um, maybe also the Third Path Iconoclast. But anyway, it's it's one mana protection. We're using March of the Swirling Mist for a very similar purpose, and it has a lot of other utility, so that's why I subbed that. Um, Recommission is a card that I was considering just because I think if you have a way to reanimate Monastery Mentor, you don't need to worry about protecting him as much. I don't think that goes in this deck, though. I think that goes in a different deck that plays other high-value three drops, like perhaps Chrome Host Seed Shark. I'm not a huge fan of this card just yet. Um, I don't know. There's cards that there's been cards like this out in the past three drops that um, I haven't been a huge fan of. This is this is another one to add to the long list of those. But maybe I'll maybe I'll change my mind. Uh, at some point, but I think that this could go in maybe even a more pure is at style of this deck. So that was something I considered. Invasion of Mercadia is another way that we can kind of dig deeper, and it's a way that we can give everything haste. Instead of Invasion of Mercadia, I opted for Bitter Reunion. I think this is a better card a lot of the time because it's not conditional to give all your things haste. Like you don't have to work to flip this card to be able to give all your creatures haste, which is a big, big benefit of this card. Reckless Impulse is just another way to keep going off. I mean, I think Impulse is better, but like if you wanted more ways, this would probably be the next best way to do that. May It'd be even better than Bitter Reunion, except for the fact that Bitter Reunion gives everything haste when you need that to happen. Balmore Battle Mage Captain doesn't really fit in this deck is what I found. The nice usage of Balmore is that you have all these tokens made by uh, Third Path Iconoclast that do not have prowess. So this essentially gives them prowess and you know it also gives the, the tokens made by Segovia prowess and it basically gives all the other things that already have prowess like Monastery Mentor and his monk tokens basically gives them double prowess. So now you're growing their power by two and giving them trample. So potentially very good, but I just found that there's already like a crowd, a glut of two drops, and to play yet another creature in here, you know, if we cut third path iconoclast for this, then Balmor's less good. So I'm not really sure where that fits. Fable is the obvious thing that's missing in this deck. I just don't know that it plays. I mean, I think there are other versions of Invasion of Segovia decks that want to play Fable of Mirror Breaker, and it's such great value but we're not just purely playing a value game, and I don't know. I mean, I think it's probably a mistake for me not to play it, but it's probably better than Third Path Iconoclast, to be honest. I mean, maybe just sub this out, play Fable instead, and you'd be happy. I don't know. Fading Hope and Geist Wave um, basically bounce. I didn't end up playing bounce after all in this deck, although Geist Wave is very good with cards like Invasion of New Phyrexias. You can bounce them back and make more you know, night tokens. Fading Hope is just a cheaper way to play that bounce effect so that you could maybe use that as protection for your Monastery Mentor. It doesn't feel great because you have to recast the Monastery Mentor and you want to be casting non-creature spells, not creature spells. So having to recast him feels really bad, but that is a card that you would consider. Um, the other card that you can consider here as a one mana option is, uh, I can't remember what it, the one mana, slip out the back, there it is, um, that gives one creature 
you know, the phases one creature up. That would be another, I think, very viable card to play instead. But again, March of Swirling Mist is playing that purpose. Between four March of Swirling Mist and three Make Disappear, that's a decent amount of protection. And four Invasion of Gobicon, which won't probably won't be up, well, definitely won't be up turn three to allow you to play, you know, Monastery Mentor and protect it. But, you know, between those eight, nine, 10, 11 different cards, that's quite a lot of potential protection for both your Mentor and your Invasion of Segovia. This is less important to protect, which seems bizarre because it's so central in the deck. But the reason is that you don't have to flip it the same turn that you've committed mana to it. So that's a big deal because you can get value out of it even if it gets removed right away you know, you can still get value out of it. So it, it's less key to protect this card, which seems wild, but yeah, just because this is actually a three mana play and it comes down as a body that if it gets removed right away feels bad, an invasion of Segovia is not really that. People aren't playing battle removal, <laughs> you know, at least not yet. So, uh, and even if they did, we wouldn't care because we hadn't invested in flipping it just yet. So whatever, you know, we play four of them, get wrecked. Anyway, thank you so much for uh, checking out the video. Please go check out Capricorns. Uh, I'm gonna make more decks with Invasion of Segovia and my plan is to post them on the channel. Uh, kind of a side note, this is outside my comfort zone. Typically, I don't like to post a list until I've really refined it and I've played around with it a lot um, competitively. As you can see, I'm still in bronze. I, I, don't, I, have, I don't spend as much time anymore laddering as I used to. So I still wanted to show you it in the rank ladder because then we're more likely to see meta decks, which we did, we, we saw some meta decks. Um, but uh, in any case, I haven't had the chance to refine this. This is outside my comfort zone, but I wanted to, for once, post some, um, some videos earlier on in a format because I almost always post at the end, which is a terrible time to post YouTube videos. And also it means that you have less time to play with that deck yourself before maybe it becomes less relevant or even it rotates. So. I'm, I'm putting myself outside my comfort zone here by posting this, and that's just me making an excuse for myself to say that there's probably plenty of room to improve this. So I'd be very curious if you play this deck yourself and you find some fun substitutions. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you in the next one.